Hey folks, um, part of the stuff in my head that inspired me to do this video was generated by material that was created by Neotropic9 and I would like to do a shout out and say that he produces some great stuff, some videos uh, primarily about philosophy and you can go up to the description box um, and I strongly re recommend you check them out and uh, subscribe. Really solid, real keen mind and he's got a great bullshit detector. Anyhow, I was uh, thinking about making a video about showing people how to do uh, the sequence of isomers. Those are different possibilities for laying down carbon atoms for organic molecules. Um, uh, as a response to a previous video I made, uh, I had a request for something like that. Um, and uh, Peterman also, in more general terms, uh, requested that. And all this got me to think a little bit about lots of stuff, uh, including um, just the general nature of our perspectives on science. And one of the things that's happening right now is I'm tutoring a gal who, um, she's very, very bright, but basically a math type, and she just doesn't like organic chemistry. And I get this a lot. Some very bright people don't like organic chemistry because organic chemistry is not a science. What that means is, is that you can't make accurate predictions from organic chemistry, and that's because we can't crunch the numbers. Now, in theory, there are equations that allow us to do the calculations precisely and make predictions, but we are just unable to crunch the numbers. Uh, this is also uh, true in chess, for example. In chess, uh, even, though, even though computers like Deep Blue and... Uh, new ones now, are able to uh, play fantastic games. They, like human beings, use algorithms. In fact, uh, Gary Kasparov has accused uh, Deep Blue and IBM of cheating and using human input, um, but he says it can't be proven. But uh, that may or may not be true. But the point behind that is, is and he's kind of a brave guy for taking on Putin because uh, I guess there's a lot of polonium-235 running around, or 210. Um, anyway, um, so the deal about chess is, is that um, you need to use algorithms, that is strategies, you can't brute force it. There's a game called Reverse, uh, also known as Othello, uh, started in the Middle Ages, in which you have uh, little chips or coins, black or white, heads or tails, and you flip them on a 64 uh, square grid, 8 by 8. And it turns out that, um, oh, I don't know, about 15 years ago, maybe 20, I heard that a computer could brute force it, and I um, was very disappointed because it's a, it's a really cool game. The way human beings play it is they have to uh, come up with a series of rules, but none of the rules is absolute, and this is like Orgo. And then what you do is you basically evaluate uh, which rule is more important, and you make a guess as to what the best move is, and as you play more and more, uh, you get better at it. And for very complex systems, neuroscientists are using neural nets to do this kind of stuff. Anyway, that's why I like organic, and that's why this gal doesn't. And it gets back to the notion of isomers, because it turns out with these isomers, uh, which are different arrangements of carbon, and carbon has like a huge number of ways it can be arranged. Well, what happens with these is, is that, at least in the early 80s when I was a student taking chemistry, I was told that we cannot come up with an equation that will allow us to determine the number of isomers for complex systems. Um, and what you basically have to do is you just have to run them. You have to keep trying them one by one by one by one, making sure you get all possibilities. And so a computer would do it the same way a human being uh, would uh, do. In fact, uh, this is the kind of stuff that Alan Turing did a lot of uh, work with. He's the guy that came up with the Turing machine, and he's uh, principally responsible for breaking the Enigma code uh, during uh, World War II, the German uh, code. Uh, brilliant guy, and he essentially had a computer which would uh, be a simple, a, a simple computer. It wasn't an actual computer, it was just a hypothetical, uh, theoretical idea. Uh, and what, essentially what it would do is it would try to solve a problem, and there were certain problems that you could solve that um, would be, what would require you to, con to continue to work and to work and to work and to see if the computer eventually stops and says, okay, that's the answer. And, you know, I feel like a banana. Can you guys hold on a sec? I need a banana. It's, uh, it's time for one. Hang on, I'll be right back.